plants are boring until you learn what makes them exciting. If you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in plants, but don't really know where to start. Or you're someone who's dipped your toes in a botany, but you don't know where to go from there. Maybe you've watched a few Crime Pays but Botany Doesn't videos and you've been hooked. In this video, I want to give you a launching pad for learning about botany and finding more enjoyment from the natural world. Now, before I get into the details, I want to ask you if you would be so kind as to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy, because it really helps my tiny channel. Also, leave a comment if you feel like it, and I'll respond to you. First, why should you learn botany? What's the point of just doing it as a hobby? Well, here's a little experiment. If you're from the Pacific Northwest, you probably know this tree, the Douglas fir. To most people, it is unremarkable and just a standard thing of day-to-day -day life, but getting into botany, you come to learn that its scientific name is Pseudosuga menziesii. Pseudosuga meaning not a hemlock, because when botanists first came to the Pacific Northwest, they had a hard time figuring out what the hell this tree was, and menziesii, named after some stupid Italian guy, I don't know. You also learn about the Native American story about its cool pine cones, about a mouse running away from a fire and hiding in the cones, and to this day you can see the mouse hanging out of the cones. You learn that it's resilient to forest fires because it naturally delimbs and has fire-resistant bark. And at a deeper level, you learn things that aren't in the scope of this video but are still really cool. Things like the male gametophyte and how freaky weird the pollen tube is, and this is just scratching the surface. You could spend an entire day sitting next to one of these beautiful trees, the second biggest in the world, and learn everything about it. But then what? You've learned about a tree. Big deal. So what? Well, the big deal is perspective. Now you have this category in your head of what this particular tree looks like. Now you have a point of reference to observe and appreciate other plants. Let's look at another example. Here is a plant called red dead nettle. Lamium purpureum, yes, a very fun name. Notice how its corolla, the collective term for petals, is fused into a tube. Its stem is also square. It's also a perennial herb, and when you crush it, ooh, it has a funky little smell to it. These are some of the characteristics of the family Lamiaceae. Knowing characteristics of certain plant families gives you a reason to go out and spend time looking at plants. There's a great feeling of satisfaction that comes from successfully identifying your first plant, but there's also a great feeling of satisfaction that comes from simply noticing something unique about a plant. Here's another example. Check out this crazy orchid. Seeing it pop up in the summer, you would notice that there's hardly any leaves, and, well, it's completely pinkish red. No green on it. What would you infer from this? Well, Coralariza maculata is a crazy cool orchid because it's parasitic and lost its ability to photosynthesize. Having no leaves, it taps into the mycorrhizal network under the soil and steals nutrients from nearby plants and fungi. From what I remember, it mainly parasitizes russula mushrooms, which have these cool stems that snap like chalk. All this you can learn from simple observation. Sure, you could ID it and find the Wikipedia page, but I would encourage you to take time to actually observe the plants before you research them. Take notes, make guesses, just enjoy your time. Cultivate a sense of childlike whimsy when it comes to nature. This is what it means to be a naturalist, and it doesn't have to be your career or job. You don't have to be the best at it. You don't even have to be good at it. All that matters is that you enjoy it. I want to take a pause to read an excerpt from my favorite nature book, a pretty rare and hard-to-find collection of four books representing the four seasons, written by Oliver Medsger in 1931, a naturalist, a father, and someone who just wanted to bring a bit more passion about nature into the world. He writes, The crisp days of autumn are probably the finest of all the year for taking a ramble through the woods. With the blue sky above you, with the leaves of red and gold falling from the trees and rustling beneath your feet, with the smell of autumn harvests in the air, you can walk for miles enjoying the sight and sounds around you, and you can return with something more than a big appetite, for the autumn woods are full of treasures for those who know where to look for them. Perhaps you'll come home with your pockets bulging with hazel and hickory nuts, or you may have found fox grapes, wild plums, or pawpaws, Possibly you did not come across any wild fruits or nuts in your ramble, yet you could have the pleasure of observing the various kinds of acorns and learning the trees that bore them, or studying nature's means of scattering seeds from parent plants that produced them. 
Nature is lavish, her methods are interesting, but we are apt to pay a little attention to the devices she uses in accomplishing her purposes. You might not be able to get your hands on this book. It probably won't be a part of your journey, but it was a big part of the start of mine, and that's my point. Everyone needs to start somewhere, and I would recommend going to the library or a bookstore, finding the nature section, and start by simply picking out one book that you like and find interesting. Start by asking yourself, what do you find aesthetically pleasing? What is the idea or the feeling or the image you're looking for? Write it down and seek it out and surround yourself with it. Learning about botany will lead to learning about everything else. You might find yourself studying geology and how rocks turn into soil. And some of those soils, like those containing serpentine, are toxic to life, and yet how plants adapt. You might find yourself more interested in the aquatic world. You might find yourself interested in animals and their role in the ecosystem. But you should never feel guilty about loving nature and wanting to learn more. Even in this community, there are people who want to flex how much more they know than you. People try to make it a competition, they can correct you rudely, when in reality we're all here because we find nature fascinating and beautiful. No one knows everything about it, and that's part of the fun. Someday, you'll look back and find it shocking that most people don't stop to look at interesting plants, or crouch to check out a mushroom, or try to follow a squirrel to see what it's up to. Botany was a starting place for me to break out of the mold of deterministically moving from one place to another in my life. It allows you to cultivate passion, curiosity, and creativity. True observation is a lost art, and I don't claim to be great at it, but the pursuit of it adds so much value to your life. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are the actual resources for learning more about nature. To be honest, the two biggest resources for me have been Wikipedia and iNaturalist. Both of them are free. If you don't have iNaturalist, please get it. This isn't an advertisement, but it also is an advertisement. It is genuinely one of the most useful apps I have. And with that, I want to thank you if you've made it this far. If this is something you enjoyed, let me know and I'll make more. If you have ideas for future videos, please let me know. And I hope all of you have a great day and stay curious.